to Christy's Bits of Wisdom podcast. I'm your host, Christy. My goal is to help you start your mornings off right by sharing a short story or a parable that will motivate and encourage you to live your best life with God. By using the infinite wisdom found in His Word, you truly can live a life of happiness and peace in Christ. I'm leaving proof. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. Also, if you like what you hear, please share with your friends and family so they can scoop up some bits of wisdom for themselves. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of the podcast. Today is Wednesday, July 14th, and I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great Tuesday. Um, I told you about how I fell down on Monday by chasing my little dog who got out of the house. Well, <laughs> I've been sore ever since. I feel like I got hit by a car. My back is sore. My legs are sore. Um, every part of me hurts. So I'm trying to recuperate from that. So if you guys don't care, send up just a few more prayers for me. And hopefully here in the next couple of days, I'll, um, I'll end up, you know, back on my feet, so to speak. And, um, you know, just be, be the old me again, <laughs> hopefully. Um, anyway, I want to continue my series on the five senses. I told you the other day on Monday um, all about the senses and how they work and why we have them um, and that our senses as humans help us to perceive the world around us, our environment, things that are going on. Um, they send the information to our brains and then our brain processes it and lets us know um, what it's all about, you know, what everything's all about. So like I said yesterday, you know, hearing um, our, you know, we take in words through our ears, um, it sends it to our brain, our brain processes it and helps us to figure out how to communicate with each other. And um, so today I want to talk about the sense of smell. And um, it's not, this is not going to be a long episode at all. Um, I've just got a couple, maybe two or three scriptures I want to share with you. But um, anyway, as humans, we use the sense of smell um, in a couple of the different ways. One thing that I love, and I know most people do, um, is candles or wax melts. You know, those little squares that um, of uh, scented wax that you put in your burner. Oh my gosh, listen, I love, <laughs> I love anything like that. I can be, like my whole house smells so good because I just burn those things all the time. Or candles. Um, but I love on my favorite is uh, like in August, I'll go ahead and uh, late August, you know, I'll go ahead and get out all my fall scents. So like cinnamon apple and just, you know, baked apple pie, different things like that. So I enjoy uh, my sense of smell for that stuff. But we also use our sense of smell, um, to keep us, like I said the other day from drinking like bad milk. Um, I think I mentioned on Monday that I had opened up a bag of shredded mozzarella cheese. I had just bought it at the store a couple of days before. It hadn't been open. I pulled, you know, I opened it up, ripped the seal off, opened it up, and it hit me square in the face. It was so stinking sour. I mean, it was, oh, it was horrible. And um, so I knew that it was bad, and I knew not to eat it, and I threw it away. I probably should have taken them back because I got two. I got buy one, get one free. I probably should have taken them back to the store, but I didn't. But um, anyway, so yeah, that's how we, that's how we use our sense of smell, it, you know, for good things and for bad. So it, so it helps us to feel good. And then it, it gives us a warning as well. Um, but God also um, uses, use the sense of smell ever since the beginning of the time, all the way back in Genesis 8, um, I found in Genesis 8 where the Bible talked about um, how our sacrifices are a sweet aroma to God. Um, and we all know what happened back in Genesis. You know, in Genesis 8, um, Noah was out on the ark, you know, with his family and all the animals. And God destroyed the earth with a flood because um, there was so much evil on the earth. You know, he just felt like he had to destroy it. But anyway, after all the days and nights on the ark... Um, um, he finally sent out, you know, the bird and it came back with a little olive branch. And uh, Noah knew then that it was safe to go ahead and, um, you know, park the ark, <laughs> so to speak, and uh, open it up and let everybody get off of it and just start life all over on the earth. 
And the first thing that Noah did, the very first thing the Bible said that Noah did after everybody got off, you know, after all the animals went forth and they just went out, he just turned them all loose and let them go so they could start to repopulate the earth. But the very first thing that Noah did, um, it said that Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So even way back in Genesis, you know, that's a form, not only is that a form of sacrifice to the Lord, but that's a form of tithing because, you know, we're taught to give our first fruits to God, um, our, the first off of our payday, you know, the first off, you know, back in, back in the Old Testament, their land, they gave the first, um, like the animals, their first animals, they gave the first bunch of uh, fruit and crops that they grew. And so as soon as Noah got off the boat or off the ark, you know, he gave he gave first first of the animals and he offered them as a burnt offering um, to God on the altar. And the Bible said in Genesis eight twenty one, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. So God said right there, when Noah offered that sacrifice to him, that meant so much to the Lord. And God appreciated that so much that it actually smelled sweet to God. And he made a promise right then. He was like, I'm not going to destroy the earth with water anymore. Um, and so back in, let me go over. I want to read this one too. Um, this one's found in Leviticus um, 2 and no, this was found in Leviticus 3 and 5. Um, it said, Then Aaron's son shall offer it up in smoke on the altar, on the burnt offering, which is on the wood that is on the fire, an offering by smoke, by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. Okay, kind of got that all mixed up. But anyway, so Aaron's sons, they also offered up um, a sacrifice to the Lord. And and it smelled sweet. Um, and then Leviticus 2.2 2, um, says, He shall then bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and shall take it from his handful of its fine flour and of its oil and all of its frankincense. And the priest shall offer it up in smoke as a memorial portion on the altar by offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. So, so we see that anything that they brought to the Lord um, and they... They offered it as a burnt offering. Anything they did, they sacrificed, you know, they sacrificed these animals and they sacrificed these offerings to God. And it meant so much to him that it was, that he could smell it. It was a sweet smell. Now, we're in New Testament times, you know, we're not under, we're not in, we're not in the Old Testament times anymore. Jesus came and he changed everything. He made, you know, he changed us from the law to grace. Um, and his death, we were separated from God, um, but the death of Jesus um, sort of like, I want to say, built a bridge or made us able to, you know, be reconciled to God, our Father, uh, because of the shed blood of Jesus. And um, so now, instead of offering up, like, I don't have to go out here, you know, and find a goat and, and, and slaughter it and burn it on an altar to uh, offer a sacrifice to God. Now I use my prayer and my praise and my worship as my um, sacrifice to God. Um, and, and I offer that up as, um, as, as, as an offering to him. And that is a um, sweet aroma. Let me, I'm going to try to look this up. I, I'm going to look this up. I'm going to try to find this. Yeah, it's, we're to give a sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Though Jesus, therefore, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Um, and so that word sacrifice, that's what they were doing in the Old Testament with the animals. That was their sacrifice. So if, if the animals... When they were when they were a burnt offering, if that smelled good to God, imagine how much our sacrifices smell smell good to Him. Um, but so Psalms one forty one two, it says, "May my prayer be set before you like incense. By the lifting of my hands, be like 
the evening sacrifice. And another translation says, Let my prayer be accepted as sweet smelling incense in your presence. And so I imagine that when we come to God, because like I wouldn't know what it was to like offer up an animal, but when I come to God with my hands lifted and my heart, my heart pure toward him and I give him my praise, that smells sweet in his uh in his nostrils, you know, that smells sweet. Um and, and we've all heard that, you know, I've heard it preached. I've heard people say, you know, your your prayer is a sweet smelling aroma in the nostrils of God. And that's what that means. That's where that comes from. Psalm 141, 2. Um, and then I'll end with this one, Philippians 4, 18. It says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent for you are an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And so that was, I'm pretty sure that was, let me go see. I don't know if that was Timothy or Paul. Oh, I should have already had this. I uh, should have already. That was Paul. Okay. And so, and so, and so um, the things that they gave him, and I read that those were like things like a, a paper and pens that he could write with and that meant a lot to him that meant a lot to him and it was a it was a sacrifice that was acceptable and it pleased God as well when those people gave him those things that he needed um um so they had sent him to him and so it was it, so it was like of course I don't think it really actually smelled it didn't have an actual odor but it was sweet he, he he felt like it was sweet and kind a kind gesture and so it was like a sweet smell to him and a sweet sweet odor to God but anyway I'm not sure this even made a whole lot of sense today but I hope it did but I'm just wanting you to know that anytime you bring the sacrifice of praise the lifting of your hands the lifting of your heart worship to God that smells good in his nostrils. And that's how God uses the sense of smell. He's always used the sense of smell. Um, and we use it like I explained in the beginning. Um, but God uses it as well. Tomorrow I will do another one on like the fourth sense. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And um, if you're listening on YouTube, give a like and subscribe and leave a comment, um, if you will, and share it with your friends and family. And I will catch you guys tomorrow.